Rock of Ages is fueled by high-octane 80s rock, including Bon Jovi, Journey, Styx, Pat Benatar, and so much more. It's a story of a legendary Hollywood rock club facing demolition and a young rocker hungry for his big break and a small-town girl chasing her dreams. been chaos at its finest. Um, from, from the very first day, it was just kind of, you know, come in and play and find new bits, new jokes, and every night the show changes. So it's kind of right in my wheelhouse. I get to play around and invent kind of on the spot. And depending on what we're getting from the audience that night, there really are no rules, especially for my character. I get to break every convention and never gotten to do that before. So it's been kind of a fun learning experience that way. We'll talk about the role. Mm -hmm. um, Lonnie Barnett. I'm surprised no one's come to offer me any awards yet, to be honest with you, because the role is pretty special. It's like an onion. Layers. <laughs> I'm lying. It's oh, we know. It's... <laughs> It's, uh, he's a screwball, it's, it's pretty much, um, he's a cartoon character, and, uh, like I said, there's, there are no rules, I can kind of, uh, kind of break every, every convention, every wall, and, and just kind of have fun with the crowd, and, and, and kind of, um, let them know not to take the show seriously, that we don't take the show too seriously, but at the same time, we're not going to make fun of ourselves, and, and kind of, uh, you know, a, a lot of jukebox musicals can really comment on the jukebox musical, and we do, but but it's a very fine line between making fun of and and sending it up, and uh, and it's a clever script, so you know, we're, it's kind of our saving grace is that um, people come expecting something kind of stupid and shallow, and at the end of the day, it's it's very clever, and and they can't help but have fun, and so my character kind of gets to set the tone, which is a lot of fun. I play the role of Stacy Jacks. He's kind of um, the dumbass rocker who just thinks he's God's gift to humanity and he comes in and uh, messes with uh, the love interests and uh, and um, I don't know he's kind of coked out of just idiot if you've seen Spinal Tap it's kind of that kind of dude and let's talk about the 80s music I mean how well did you know this kind of music that you're singing in the show and why audiences have fallen in love with the show um, well it's kind of a true jukebox musical in that it's you know all previously recorded music and, and stuff that everybody knows so the good thing about it is like it's they kind of handpick the best tunes out of the 80s i grew up in the 80s and so it's like every song you're like oh i love this one so already you're kind of emotionally connected to it and it's a very loose environment in the theater everybody gets to sing along kind of the songs and they do we have some late shows um where people come drunk before the show starts you can order drinks during the show so it gets pretty interactive and um we had a lady crawl on stage the other night that was a lot of fun um, but it's great. I mean, this, the songs are fantastic and um, incredibly hard to sing. I gotta take a little time A little time to think me over I gotta read between the lines In case I need it when I'm older It is a blast. I feel so blessed. Um, we have such an amazing cast, and the material that we're working with is just incredible. Uh, 80s rock music from the greatest hair bands is some of the, just the funnest stuff to sing. Um, for me, uh, Sherry, 
is very much the heart of Rock of Ages because her journey is so great. You know, she starts off in one place and she ends in an entirely different place with so much more knowledge than she had when she started out. So for me, getting to take that journey every night, I feel really blessed because sometimes in a in campy kind of musicals, you don't really get to go there as an actor, but um, I get to do both. You know, what's great about this, the book is really a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's smart, it's funny, they really blended it really beautifully with this music. How well did you know the songs you sing in the show? How well were you, you know, in with the 80s music? Believe it or not, I knew a lot of these songs already. Um, I grew up with a mom who, God love her, she was a little behind. <laughs> so when I was, you know, growing up in the late 80s to 90s, I was still listening to that music. And so I know, like, when we heard Waiting for a Girl Like You for the first time, I was like, that's my fifth grade birthday party. So I actually knew a lot of the music. So what is it? I mean, audiences have fallen in love with this show and fallen in love with 80s music. Why do you think it is? I, there's just something about 80s rock that is so, um, it doesn't apologize for what it is, it just goes there in terms of the costumes and the language and the everything, it was just so out there and in your face and I think where we are right now in society, people just need to release and let go and, and that really gives them that opportunity to do that and I feel blessed to be a part of that right now. Shyness is cute, Drew, but don't get you what you want. Um, okay, fine. That was fine what? The Fine, I'd like to... Uh, like nothing, be forceful. Well, Dig deep. What do you need? I, what do you want? I don't know. Jesus Christ, say it, Wolfgang. I want to rock. Rock. I want to rock. It's been wonderful. Actually, uh, they had talked to me about the show a few years ago. Uh, I was fresh off American Idol. I, I grew up in the theater, so, you know, it was always my home and everything. Um, and they were doing a production, a sort of workshop production of it in Los Angeles. I really wanted to be a part of it, but my schedule was just kind of crazy at the time. Um, I know they, that Laura was working on, Laura Bell Bundy was working on it at the time. We were going to try to make it happen, and it just didn't. So we've always stayed in touch, and when they knew they were coming to New York, you know, we, we talked about my visit availability and we just worked it out and um, I just think it's a great show you know uh, the music clearly it's 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 wonderful music it's a great era of music um, but I think we have a great you know book a great story and, and an incredible ensemble and we're having a lot of fun um, I think it's the perfect show for this sort of climate we're in um, with the economy and all this change and everything that's going on people just kind of want to come to the theater sometimes just to have a great time you know it's wonderful to see a, a dark and mysterious show with these incredible themes and all of that um, but sometimes you just want to come have a great time you know hear some awesome singers see some hot girls and guys and and just have fun so uh, that's what we're doing are these songs hard to sing? I mean, you have such an incredible range, and there's so many high notes, I mean, really high head notes in 80s music. Was that easy for you to learn? Um, yeah, I grew up with this music, definitely. I was in my room singing these songs, uh, putting on concerts in my head, you know, uh, Bon Jovi, all of these songs were, were just huge for me, huge inspiration to me. And I always found a, a, a huge theatrical sort of, um, I don't know, vibe about these songs. So. Uh, I don't know. It's not hard for me, let's say. Um, you know, it's certainly not easy singing Steve Perry, you know, two times a day. And we just did a show last night at 10 p.m. We came down, you know, almost 1 o'clock in the morning. We're here for 2 o'clock matinee. It's crazy. But uh, my voice just kind of sits up there, you know. If it were, you know, a bunch of bass kind of songs, I, I wouldn't be able to do it. But my voice just kind of sits up there. And, and uh, sure, it's taxing, but, it's you know, it's rock and roll. Talk about the role that you play. I mean, he seems like such a fun role to play. It is a lot of fun. Uh, I play Drew, and Drew is an aspiring rock star. Uh, he is from the Midwest, from Detroit. He's uh, he's uh, born and raised in South Detroit, as they say in the Journey song. And uh, he moves to L.A. You know, with a big dream. Uh, he's really shy, uh, sort of introverted. Um, he takes a job up in the big rock and roll club in Los Angeles on the Strip, and uh, it's an honor to work in these uh, in these bars. Believe me, I've, I've worked in a lot of them. And, uh, you know, he's learning and he's writing, and I think until he meets Sherry, uh, played by Carrie, Kelly Barrett, um, Sherry Christian, you know, he doesn't really have the... I don't know the the balls. Let's say to sort of just go for it, and she really she really uh, she really gets it out of him. And 
you know, sort of like a boy meets girl love story and lots of madness ensues and all that. But, uh, you know, I think he's a good guy. He's really earnest and uh, he believes in what he's doing. And, you know, he's seen all these people make it around him that maybe don't have as much talent, let's say, but uh, they just know how to do it. And uh, he's learning. But, uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun.